Hi, this is a video about solving systems of equations, or otherwise known as simultaneous equations. <coughs> Excuse me. This is where you have two equations with two unknowns, or sometimes three equations with three unknowns, or four equations with four unknowns. We're going to stick with two and two in this video. Uh, the whole idea is you have two equations that have two unknowns in it. In this case, x and y are our unknowns. You've got the two equations there. What values of x and y work in this equation and this equation? Or we more formally we say which values of x and y satisfy these equations, make these equations true. How can we solve this to find out what the values of x and y are? Well, there are at least six different methods, and I'm not here to teach you how to guess and check. You can attempt that yourself, and matrices is a bit tougher, um, and I have other videos on that if you really want to explore that, but that's something you do a lot later on in your maths career. Uh, and also in this video, I'm not going to show you anything about a calculator or computer. I'm going to show you these three methods. Let's start with the graphical method. So this is the equation we had before. All you do is you graph them. Now, how do you graph them? Well, that's up to you, and we'll deal with that later on. But what you then do is find where they cross. You can see here, well, it's a bit hard to see here, but these definitely cross at 2, 3. So that means that the answer is x equals 2 and y equals 3. Use the coordinates of the point to tell you what values are bank x and y you're after. And just what you should always do is go back and check. So put 2 in for x and 3 in for y. 3 times 2 plus 3 equals 9. Yes, correct. 2 times 2 is 4 minus 2 times 3. So 4 minus 6 is negative 2. Yes, correct. I got it wrong. Okay, here's a more detailed example. Again, we plot the lines. Now line number one, what I do is I rearrange it. So y equals 2x plus 6. And then I can put my y-intercept at 6 and my gradient of 2, and then graph it. Okay, rise over run, it's 2. Um, and I can rearrange the second one, y equals negative 3x plus 1, so the plus 1 is my gradient, and they go down 3 across 1, it looks like that. And then I work out where these cross, which happens to be negative 1, 4 on this graph, so that's my answer, x equals negative 1, y equals 4. Um, this may not be the best way to plot it. You can just put x equals 0 and find out whether the y intercept, uh, x-intercept is, and y equals 0, find out where the x-intercept is. Um, but there you go. That's how you solve it graphically. Draw the two graphs and see where they cross. The problem is, if you're not confident drawing graphs, or if you're not accurate drawing graphs, or if you don't have enough paper, uh, and if you don't have whole numbers that are easy to see, it gets a little bit hard. So we've got two other methods to look at. Substitution method. What you do, so it's a similar equation to before. What we do is we take the two equations, we rearrange one of them to make it say x equals or y equals. In this particular example, let's rearrange number two because it's easiest to be y equals 1 minus 3x, or negative 3x plus 1. And then all you do is you take this and you substitute it in back into equation 1. So where you have y in equation 1, you write negative 3x plus 1 in brackets. OK, now you've got an, one equation that just has x's in it, so you can solve it. So we multiply out the brackets, and then we've got six and negative negative makes positive. So we've got ten x's altogether. 
minus 2, so add 2 to both sides, so 10x equals negative 10, and then divide by 10, x equals negative 1. We take this solution, which is correct, and put it back in another, the different equation. Probably easiest to put it back in here, but I'm going to put it back in that one. And we just solve that. So negative 3 plus y equals 1, so y has to be 4. And that's our answers. Then we go back and quickly check that works. 4 times negative 1, negative 4, minus 2 times 4 is minus 8, negative 4 minus 8 is negative 12, correct, etc. Okay? So you make one of the equations, say x equals or y equals, sub it in the other equation, find your, your remaining um, unknown, and then sub it back to find the other one. Another example a bit more quickly. Here I'm going to rearrange number 1 to be x equals, and then I'm going to sub that into number 2. Okay, and then expand out the brackets, collect the like terms, find y, take that y, and sub it back into the first equation, and I get what x is. That's my answer. Hey, by the way, write down these little ones and twos and sub in two and all this, these little directions, because that really helps communicate what you're doing to the person who's reading it, but also to yourself, makes you remember what you're doing, and you get less confused. It takes no time, and it makes your life easier. Um, another question, what happens if we did it the other way. So if instead of x equals, I did y equals with equation 2, I was still going to get the same answers. Well, yes, we are. We'll sub number 2 back into number 1, expand the brackets, simplify, get x equals 3, which is what we have down here. Take that x equals 3, sub it back into this equation 2, get y equals negative 1. So it works both ways. All right, let's just quickly click through this one. Two equations, rearrange number one, sub it in number two, simplify, solve for x, take that x, sub it back into either equation, this time sub it into one, get y equals four, that's my solutions. Quickly check minus 2 plus 4 equals 2, 2 times minus 4, 2 minus 4 equals minus 8. Correct. Good. Okay, and that's the substitution method. Okay, now we've got elimination method. With the substitution method, you substituted so you only had one variable x or one variable y. Here we're going to eliminate so we only have one variable. In this example, we've got x minus 2y equals negative 8, and x plus y equals 1. So we've got an x and an x there. They're the same thing. If I just subtracted these two equations, did 1 minus 2. So I've rewritten it so it's above each other to make it really easy. x minus x is 0. Minus 2y minus y is minus 3y. And minus 8 minus 1 is minus 9. So now we've got negative 3y equals negative 9. So y equals 3. Okay, so I've added the two equations, sorry, subtracted the two equations so that I don't have any x's anymore and I worked out what y is. Now I just take that y and I sub it back into either equation to work out what x is. And those are my two, two solutions. Okay, another example. This one's a bit harder. So I can't just add them or subtract them straight away because if I do, I'll still have x and y. What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply equation 2 by 2. So I get 6x plus 2y equals 2. And if I take this first equation and write it, rewrite it, if you add those together, minus 2y and plus 2y, they'll cancel each other out. So they have 10x there, 
zero y's and minus 10 there. So 10x equals negative 10, x equals negative 1. Take the negative 1 and sub it back into the other equation and we get 4, which is the same answer we got using the other method earlier. Okay, just one more example. Uh, this time, again, we can't just add them or subtract them because we still have x and y, so I've got to multiply them by something, multiply them each by something, so that I can do it. Um, so I've multiplied number 1 by 5 and number 2 by 4. So now I've got 20x plus 10y equals 70 and 20x minus 12y equals 4. So we've got the 20x and 20x. Um, and so if I subtract those two, the x's will disappear. I could have times number 1 by 3 and number 2 by 2 and got 6y and negative 6y, and then the y's would disappear, but either way, it doesn't matter. You get nice easy numbers here. So we've got y equals 3, and then we take that, and we put that back in our other, into either of the equations, and we get what x is. Okay, I just want to quickly talk about two special cases. This is the case we have no solution. So if we add, uh, if we subtract those two from each other, we get zero equals two, and that's never true. So that means there is no values for x and y that are true for this one and this one. You could solve x and y for this equation, and you could solve it for this, but they won't be the same x and y. Never. There's no way. That means that's because the lines are parallel; they never intersect. In this case, we've got infinite solutions. If we double the first one and subtract them, we'll get 0 equals 0. Okay, 0 equals 0 is always true, and that's because these are both the same line. Okay, so anything you put for x and y that works there, it'll work there too. All right, I hope, uh, you've, I hope that little video gives you some confidence solving. Um, simultaneous equations, and uh, good luck with that very important skill to master.